Do you want to pat? The golden rule is never climb the gate. In the middle, always go to one side. See, can we get some horse sound effects? These are feisty horses. Do you want to pat? Oh, we got teeth. God, he's got bad teeth. Worse than me. Okay, that's enough distraction with horses. One, two, three, four, five. How's it going everyone? It's Hugh Sweeney back with another video coming from this lovely little picturesque laneway here. An ideal place for me for shooting videos. Now I had purchased the Rode Go 2 wireless system there recently and just after that then I got sent this. It's called the G2, A2 in brackets, don't know what that means. Compact wireless lav mic system. Now this is really well priced and you get a lot for that price. You get two of the transmitters and the receiver as well. Plus they include two lav mics as well, which you can use with the transmitters. You get the USB cable with the three of the USB connections at one end, so you can charge three devices. So I'm gonna test this out today and compare it to the Rode system. And guess what? I'm also gonna compare it to one of my old school microphones, the old Sennheiser system, which I've been using for nearly a decade now. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just test the range. I'm gonna walk backwards here and I'm gonna turn around and see if the audio continues to broadcast. So I'm talking again here now, reversing back. I'm about 50 meters now. Also talking again. So now I'm facing the camera. So what happens when I do a full? As you can hear, the signal breaks up easily on the Cinco after a few meters whilst walking away from the camera. But it worked perfectly when I was at the horses, about eight meters from the camera. If you plan on being more than a few meters away from the camera, it's definitely a good idea to maintain a clean line of sight between the transmitter and receiver. So now it's time to compare the Cinco G2 wireless system to the Rode Go 2 wireless system, the one that I recently bought. Now I spent over 300 euros on this because I bought the system with the two transmitters and receiver and I bought a lav mic to go with it as well and I was quite happy with this. But the Cinco is a lot cheaper and you get a bit more. You get the lavs included as well. So let's try out the sound of this and see how this compares and see what it's like in terms of transmission to the actual Cinco system. I've been blessed today with the lack of traffic. There is no traffic. Now I'm facing away from the camera. Facing the camera this time, I'm gonna count and I'm gonna slowly turn around. One, two, three, four, five, Six, <laughs> eight, nine. The Rode Go 2 seems to have a stronger signal when facing away from the camera at further distances. But again, I would recommend keeping that line of sight if you're creating a long gap between you and the camera. So we'll just try out the Sennheiser now and see what it sounds like in comparison. I haven't done much in the area of wire management. I'm just letting it hang outside my jacket. And likewise, we're just gonna walk down the road. So I have a feeling that I don't even need to turn around, that even out of the line of sight, this Sennheiser is gonna work just fine. So I'm 150 meters now, and this is the Sennheiser. And if I turn around away completely, I bet you that this is working just fine. My old school Sennheiser did break up a little when I faced away from the camera, but only at long distances, like around 70 meters. With these Sennheiser radio mics, it's always a good idea to sync it up when you get to a new location to get a strong radio signal. I hadn't done this, so bear that in mind. And I also hadn't brought a windscreen for the lab so you could hear the wind a little bit more. So what I've done now is I have taken out the little lav microphone that comes with the unit. Now there's two labs actually come with these units, one for each of the transmitters, which when you think about it is very good value considering the price that this whole package comes at. So what I'll do is I will just literally clip it on there. Now I will, you know, try and keep the aesthetics okay. Bang this in here. It'll probably fall out because I don't think that's a pocket. And zip up again and now we have somewhat reasonable lav mic here. 
So now that I have the lav mic plugged in, it gives me a chance to look at the actual unit itself. The build quality is quite good. It has a gloss finish on the front and it has a slightly rubberized edging to it, which feels decent. I mean, it's a lightweight unit. You don't want it to be too heavy and you don't need it to be made of metal or anything like that. If you dropped it, I'm sure it would be okay. I think the rubber around the edge would protect it. There's a few little buttons around it on the transmitter here. You have two buttons on one side. One is the low cut button, and the other is a button that's marked by a little chain signal, which has to do with pairing up the device. Not that you need to do it, because when you take this out of the box, it's plug and play, it'll connect instantly. But you might have to just repair it at some stage. On the left, there's a mute button, which doubles up as the power button. Be careful that you don't accidentally press that. I would say if you're using these units to keep checking on your camera every now and again that you're getting the actual sound signal coming into your camera. That's very, very important. These lightweight lavalier microphone systems like the Cinco G2 here can be configured in different ways. You can actually have the two microphones in a mono signal so if they're both switched on and different people you can have them just merged into the one channel into a mono signal or you could go left and right and have one of them record to the left track one of them record to the right track so that if i remove that one there and move it over you're probably going to hear it coming out through one side now and likewise if i go back here and get rid of this one you're going to hear it coming out of the other side. Now to switch between mono and stereo on the receiver, all you have to do is press the one little button and it'll just toggle straight away. And in general, it's probably a good idea to go with stereo if you're doing two people, so that if there is any sort of problem with one of the microphones, if there's any glitching or if it's going out of signal or if there's any bumps or any crackles, It'll only come through one channel and the other person's microphone will be perfectly preserved. So stereo is better for that, but if you're on your own and you're filming with just one microphone, it's probably just easier to do mono. One, two. Okay, so um, now in this direct sunlight, I actually can't get the system working because I can't see what I'm doing on the screens. One, two. I was looking forward to a nice cup of tea there, just sitting down, and then I went to set up the Cinco mic system and I could not see what I was doing on the screens. I thought I pressed something like accidentally muted it. And because the screens are so hard to see, I actually couldn't figure out what was wrong. I had to go into the car to actually see them. I'm out on my own doing a job here for my own YouTube channel. I mean, it doesn't matter, but if I was doing a work job, that could have been a little bit dicey. I don't think I've ever seen an LCD screen that's so difficult to see in daylight. Believe it or not, it's actually switched on here. Luckily, us filmmakers are resourceful types, and by placing it inside my t-shirt, I'm able to see the screen. So I'm just testing the ambient audio here now. And there's a few people running around, chatting, tire noise off cars, the odd screaming kid. There you go. And there's some builders over there doing work, but they're not doing anything now. So it's kind of ambient audio. The price of the G2A2 is around $200 and similar in Euros, Europe side. It's notably cheaper than the Rode. And bear in mind that it comes with two LAVs included. And with the Rode, you gotta buy a separate LAV. Now I've just plugged in the LAV microphone into the transmitter. So now it's not using the, the onboard microphone, it's using the LAV. And I'm just comparing that sound. Now I think the LAV, comes in a little bit hotter, I'm not too sure. So if you are switching from the actual mic built into the transmitter to the plug-in lav microphone, do check the levels once again and make sure that it's not distorting or clipping because the other day I think it was actually a little bit too hot and it was coming out a small bit distorted. So what would happen when I plug in the Rode microphone? Now this microphone was bought for about 60 euros. So I would imagine it's a fairly good quality microphone. Now, are you noticing any difference to the other microphone that comes with the Cinco? I don't know. Maybe it sounds worse, maybe it sounds better, but it's something to bear in mind that if you do have lav microphones lying around that you might've paid money for, it could be worth it to try them in the actual Cinco G2 system, as opposed to using the one that comes with it, which is always an option. Now let's see how the Rode sounds with its own lav. So I'm just gonna clip it on here. Now we have lav sound on the road. So how does that sound? Is it as good as the Cinco lav? I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So now I'm just talking into the road system again and it's very cumbersomely 
connected to my t-shirt here. And I'm just kind of testing the sound here. How does the road sound in comparison to the actual Cinco G2 system? We have a little bit of background noise. The wind has picked up a bit. And I think in general, it sounds on par. They sound very similar. Just putting the sunglasses on again. So what are my first impressions of how the Cinco G2 sounds? Well, it sounds decent, as good as the Rode perhaps, maybe with slightly less clarity in the highs, but it does have more mid and lower frequencies, making it sound a little bit fuller. One thing I noticed when I listened back with headphones is it seems to have a higher noise floor or hiss than the Rode. Now, it's not a huge problem and you won't notice it in most occasions, but the Rode definitely has a cleaner signal. So I think in terms of quality, you know, neither system are premium quality. You will get better quality if you spend more on microphones. These are budget audio systems, but having said that, they sound more than good enough for most video projects that all of us guys will be working on. If you are a professional videographer and you're constantly shooting people with lav microphones, maybe a more professional high-end system that costs more might be worth it. These are priced cheaper, Generally, you get what you pay for in terms of price. You might notice a huge difference, but if it's something that you do day in and day out, it might be worth it to invest in a really, really good microphone. So would I recommend the G2A2 wireless lab system from Cinco? It's so affordable that you just literally can't go wrong. And even if you have microphones already, you could probably buy this as a backup system or even a system to use for casual stuff if you're on holidays or if you're filming high risk jobs where you may run the risk of losing a microphone or something, it's not gonna break the bank to replace them because they're so affordably priced. So they sound decent. You get an incredible amount of stuff for the price. And as I said, you can't go wrong. So the G2 A2 wireless system from Cinco gets a thumbs up from me. So that's all from Renville Park here in Oran Moor today with another video from myself, Hugh Sweeney. I do hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you like your camera gear and all that, and feel free to leave a comment down below. And a thumbs up is always great as well. So from myself, Hugh Sweeney, until the next time, it's over and out from me.